Hello, welcome and good evening to another episode of Let's Code MS-DOS. And this time we want to visit the mysterious mode X. So far we did quite a bit of VGA programming. We learned how to manipulate the palette registers, how to set the mode 13 for 256 colors, and how to do text, soft scrolling, and similar things. However, let's recap a little bit. The memory layout of the PC looked like this. I think I showed this slide in a previous episode. The original PC could access 1 megabyte of RAM. The lower 600, 640 kilobytes were used for applications and for DOS. And then right after the 640 kilobytes is the segment hexadecimal A000, which is the frame buffer for the EGA and VGA cards. Then we have some upper memory blocks which can be used for expansion cards or for loading drivers and stuff. And at hexadecimal B800 is the frame buffer for the CGA and the text modes. And then right at the top of the one megabyte, there's the BIOS and the ROM. So what does it mean for the VGA? The VGA memory segment A000 is only 64 kilobytes in size, but all of the VGA cards, even the earliest ones by IBM, have at least 256 kilobytes installed. Many of them have even half a megabyte or megabyte of RAM installed, but 256 kilobytes is the lowest common denominator, so you can always expect that this is actually available. But in mode 13 you can't access the remaining 192 kilobytes, which is actually a shame. VGA's predecessor, the EGA card, introduced so-called bit planes. Four bit planes were used in the 16 color modes, but only one bit plane was active at a time Ooh, to some certain degree. You could uh, operate on all four bit planes and do some f funky operations, but we won't go into those details right now. The same concept still exists in the VGA, but we call them byte planes instead, and they can be used to actually do some kind of bank switching of the whole 256 kilobytes. The VGA has a bunch of components that we need to know and that we need to program in order to make that happen. Sitting on the system bus is the graphics controller. The system bus is the ISA bus where you plug in your expansion cards and which is basically the backbone of the PC. The graphics controller has the bus interface and the read-write logic to access the video memory. The video memory itself is organized in four planes of 64 kilobytes, which gives us the 256 kilobytes. This is then read by the sequencer, which talks to the palette registers of the DAC, the digital analog controller, which again talks to the CRT controller, which produces the image on the screen. So once we have all of those together, we can program them using the VGA I.O. ports. VGA I.O. ports are indexed, that means first we send the index of the register that we want to write to the corresponding index port and then we will read or write the data on the second port. For the attribute controller, for example, we have the port 3C0 for the index and 3C1 for the data. The sequence controller has similar ports 3C4 and 3C5 Graphics controller and CRT controller have something different altogether. And when you see here multiple different byte, uh, by not byte, but I.O. pairs, this means that um, the alternatives are actually available when you plug in the VGA to a monochrome monitor and configure the VGA to run in monochrome mode. But this is mostly not of interest to us because we will do all our stuff in color mode. Now, how do we get to mode X? Well, we go through mode 13, and that's the mode that we already know. It's the only one which is provided by the VGA BIOS, which supports 256 colors. Its advantages are that it's compatible with the short-lived MCGA 64 kilobyte standard of the IBM PS1, at least I think it was the IBM PS1, which was sort of like compatible to the CGA card, but also added this 256 color mode for games. 
Its advantage is that it's very easy to program. We have this flat pixel addressing. Every byte in this segment is directly corresponding to a pixel on the 320 by 200 screen. And it's pretty flicker free at 70 Hz. Its disadvantages are that the mode is not very powerful. You have no page flipping, you can do no scrolling, and actually the pixels are not square on a 4x3 CRT screen. So what is page flipping? Page flipping is actually the thing that we are most after together with the scrolling capabilities. So with page flipping you have a front buffer which is currently displayed by the CRT controller on the screen. And then in the background you write to a second buffer which is not shown on the screen and sometimes the redraw takes a lot of time, more than one refresh of the screen. If we were doing that in the front buffer you could see how we paint the screen and you get screen tearing and all kinds of weird artifacts. So once you finished your back buffer you basically show the front buffer and then switch seamlessly to the back buffer. And the same thing comes again at infinitum. So this is very useful for animating stuff and for games especially. So let's introduce mode X and mode Y. How do we get there? We basically enter mode 13 which already sets up all important graphics registers. The mode X was popularized by Mike Labrish who wrote a big book on graphics for the PC and it's a sort of hidden mode because it's not supported by the BIOS. But actually the, all the registers of the VGA are pretty well documented and even before Michael Abrish popularized it, it was already used in quite a few games. So the mode X actually unleashes all the power of the VGA. It makes page flipping and scrolling possible and we get access to roughly scre three screen pages. Each page will have square pixels at 320 by 240 resolution and the image refreshes at 60 Hz. We won't use that exact mode uh, when we leave out the reprogramming of the refresh and the screen size. We'll end up with something that is called mode Y. It is the same as mode X, but uses the familiar 320 by 200 resolution and has 70 Hz refresh. This gives us access to exactly four screen pages plus a few extra lines, uh, which we can use in all kinds of manners and we can still use all the graphics assets that were made for 320 by 200 resolution. So how do we set up mode Y? Well first we switch to mode 13 by calling interrupt 10 which is the graphics interrupt and then we set the memory mode register of the VGA in the sequencer controller to hexadecimal 6. If you look at the bits in that register this means that we enable 256 kilobytes of RAM sequential access and the chain 4 mode. The chain 4 mode allows us to write to the map mask register to pick which byte plane is currently active for reading or writing. This is one of the crucial steps to actually get access to the whole memory of the VGA card. Second, we set the CRTC underline register to 0 to disable the so-called word addressing mode. This further allows us to access all the video memory, so it's pretty complicated to actually get all this stuff running on the VGA. There are several bits in several registers that we have to flip to um, make all the 256 kilobytes accessible. And last but not least, we have to set the CRTC mode control register to hexadecimal E3. And if you look at the byte pattern, this at last enables byte addressing, which is the last step in enabling access to the full 256 kilobytes. If all of this doesn't mean much to you, we will come back to this in a short moment. You just have to look up these values and write them to the correct registers. It's not hard um, figuring out how to do that. That was, I think, the hard part, but that was already done more than 30 years ago by people who are probably much cl more clever than us. Anyway, we can use their knowledge and get a very nice mode for programming games. So how do we access individual pixels now in mode Y. Well, we use the mode map register, as I said, to select one of the four byte planes. Each byte plane contains all of the video pages that we see, but only roughly one quarter of one single video page. So to access one pixel, we take the x-coordinate of the pixel and uh, compute 
modulo 4, which gives us, for example, for the first pixel we get a 1, then a 2, then a 3, and a 4, and then back to 1. So every fourth pixel will be on byte plane 1, then the neighboring pixels of those will all be on byte plane 2, 3, and 4. So the whole memory contains all of the four pages, and uh, we can actually visualize this. This was the memory layout that we saw before, and this is how the VGA card actually sees it, and how it will be mapped to the um, segment A000. So I colored the different byte planes here in green, orange, red, and blue, and every byte plane contains the four video pages, which are actually not physically existing, but this is our logical partitioning of each byte plane, basically. And we can use the map mask register to, for example, pick the blue byte plane and write all our pixels that we want. Then when we are done with that, we can switch to the red, orange, and green byte plane, which all are just numbered byte plane 1, 2, 4, or 0, 2, 3, or whatever you want to call it. And this, of course, is a much more complicated addressing mode than what we had in mode 13. You should avoid switching the byte planes too often because it's a very costly operation. When you set single pixels, then you probably can't get around choosing the map mask register every time. But when you're doing, for example, uh, block transfers, copying whole sections of the memory, you should always do it in... Uh, for every byte plane. Copy everything that you need for one frame from byte plane 1 and then only switch to byte plane 2 when everything is done in byte plane 1 and so on. But we'll have a look at the code now to see how it's actually done. Okay, so this is where we left off the last time when we actually coded the GIF loader and today we want to enhance this a little bit, I think. So Instead of just loading one image, I actually want to load four different images so that we can use or show the usage of the four VGA pages. Uh, hence, I would like to load four different GIFs and let's just call them with an ominous name and, oops, duplicate that. We could use a loop, but for these four lines, I'm not going to bother. So after this, um, we at least test if one of the images could be loaded, and we are fine with that. And we will change the set graphics mode to set mode Y, which will be a different function. We will take the palette of the very first image I will make sure that all the images have the same palette. And we can't use the blit VGA function. Um, we'll use something slightly different. We'll call it copy to copy to page, which slowly copies to a certain VGA page. In upcoming episodes, we will take a look at faster blitting routines for Modex, but right now we will do it very simply uh, so not to make it confusing. And we'll only tell it how many lines it should copy, but we will also tell it which page to co copy to. So we will have another array of pointers with uh, four entries for the different pages. So same goes here. First, second and third image go to the first, second and third page with a zero as the actual first thing. And then while the keyboard wasn't hit, we're going to do something now. We will um, delay for a couple of milliseconds, let's say one fifth of a second sounds good. And then we will perform page flip. And we will toggle between all four pages. So uh, we take VGA page of index i and we'll have to take the address of that because there will be some swapping involved. Will there? Oh, probably, yeah. Uh, that's 
actually probably not even necessary and um, we will increment the index by one and take it modulo four so that when we are displaying the third or the fourth page and we do the plus one we wrap back to zero pretty simple trick you should already know this stuff and then we will actually increment the counter exactly in the same fashion this looks more or less good i think but we need to introduce the counter of course and we'll initialize that with zero so this is what the program will, looks li will look like uh, we have four uh, GIFs that we load, we check that it's there, then we actually enter mode Y, set the palette, copy all the pictures to the different video pages, and then we can quickly flip them around and make some kind of animation. So let's go to the VGA routines, because we need to implement at least the, a couple of routines here. So let's go right below set mode. Let's call it set mode y. Doesn't take any arguments. And yeah, now we have to remember what we just learned, how to initialize mode y. Well, first of all, we will have to do some. Do I need this? Do I need the registers? I don't think so. I think we can skip the registers. We can just call set mode with a VGA 256 color mode this was already defined in the previous episodes so now we have mode 13 and then we will initialize the VGA page variables and the first page has uh, offset 0 then the second page has um, 320 times 200 divided by 4 is the offset, so one quarter of the way in. However, um, I want to keep this so that we can actually change this to mode X at a future point, and then we might switch the horizontal and vertical resolutions to 360 or 240. So we actually have these variables defined, or these constants, VGA width and VGA height. And yeah, this, this is actually better for later expansion. And the second and the third are actually the same, but times two and times three. These are the offsets into the memory. Actually, this here is times zero, and to be perfectly honest, the zeroth we could also um, write in the same way. It's obviously times zero, right? So it's a bit stupid because this will evaluate to zero, but it makes the structure more clear how to calculate the offset into the VGA memory. Okay, first step that we need to do is disable the chain 4 bit. And uh, if we remember the slide, we will need to output to the sequence controller register uh, the memory mode register in there. Sequence controller, memory mode, yes, that's correct. And then we will need to output on the data port uh, hexadecimal 6 was the encoding. And step 2, disable double word mode. That's the CRTC, the CRT controller. First, um, the underline location register and again to the data port of the same we need to output just a zero very simple let's save that here 
Um, right. So next up is disabling my word mode. So we output to the CRT index again, but this time the mode control register. So byte access is possible. CRTC data. And there we had to write 0x e3. You hopefully remember the bit pattern there, but you can look it up always. And now what you want to do is we want to clear the video memory because the remaining 192 kilobytes probably has a lot of garbage and when we only partially write to the memory we will see complete garbage on the screen and we don't want that. So this is the first time we will use the map mask register. So we tell the sequence controller, oh, clear all VGA mem. So we tell the map mask register, which is in the sequence controller, that we want to enable all the planes. And we can do that by just writing a completely filled byte. This selects all the planes. And we will have to uh, write 2 to the power of 16 bits or nulls, actually. And this is uh, too big for the size T type in Turbo C, so we will have to do it twice, which is a bit lame, but we can do this. Um, so first we have no offset, we write zeros and we write exactly half of, so what we want to write is um, 0x FFF, but divided by 2 this will be, actually we want to write 1000, that divided by 2 should be 0x 80000, yeah. And the next offset is, of course, like this. Actually, it would be enough to go like this. Yeah, this should clear all the memory. Actually, is it? Is it? No, we need to start here because we started at zero here. Okay, this would have been a nice off by one error, but we won't see it anyway. And this is already everything we need to do. We disable chain 4, we disable double word and word mode, which enables byte mode and cleared all the memory. That's just fine. Let's do the pixel setting next. Because we already saw the usage of the um, word mode, word mode, no, map mask register, that's what I want to say. First of all, you can select the page, which is basically the offset into the uh, VGA memory, and you can give us an X and a Y co coordinate, and of course a color. That's what our pixel setting routine looks like. It will be slow, very slow, because it won't test if we are already in the correct mask. We could store this in a static variable, but I'm not gonna bother with that, because it can break very easily. So. Again, you already saw that we tell the index register we want to write the mask, map mask register. And then we write to the data register um, A1 shifted to the left by how, uh, which, which, which page we actually have. So X and 3 selects the um, not the page, sorry. X and 3 selects the plane, the VGA plane that we're actually writing to. You remember the four differently colored planes. And uh, the bits are actually arranged in that register in exactly that matter, manner. So we just left shift by, these, uh, by this number that we get from that. So this will select the correct plane and then we can 
just try to the VGA memory very, very simply by taking the page offset plus, um, yeah, what is the, the Y coordinate? We have to do a multiplication, VGA with times Y plus X. This is the usual calculation, but since every byte plane only has one fourth of this, we actually have to write divide by four. Or if you want to, it's a bit faster. If the compiler can't optimize this, you can actually do a right shift by two. This is a trick that people used to use back in the day. So I can write here, x divided by four is equal to x shift right by two. Um, why do I have scroll lock on? I have no idea. Okay, now it's gone. Yeah, this is the set pixel routine. That's already it. It doesn't look like much, but um, as I said, these two lines are very expensive. So this will be slow as molasses, and we will change that in a future episode. But right now, it's good enough. Next up, the actual page flipping. So, um, yeah, exactly. Um, I want to have pointers because I want to change those pointers to the bo both of the pages that we want to flip. Um, I need a temp variable because I want to do a swap, which isn't available in ANSI C. So we will do something like uh, temp is first page one, then we set page one to whatever is in page two and page two will become the temp value. Now we have swapped the variables. Then we need to calculate the high and low part of the address. And we should probably introduce a variable for that. So we will have a high address and a low address part. And the high address part is um, something which we will have to define. Uh, or with the... Yeah, no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's do it in a more simple fashion, shall we? Or shall I show you this trick? Well, we can. we can do the trick. Let's do it actually here. This is the register, the high address register, and we can combine it with the information we just calculated, but we have to take only the um, upper byte, obviously. And you're probably wondering what the high address here means. We will come to that in a very short while. And the low address will be written to the low address register and we're basically doing the same we're taking page one but this time we want the low byte and the low byte will be basically this part here if i would were to do it like this and then but i have to shift it up anyway so i can just ignore that and just shift it left eight bits if i do this then my lower bits will be always this constant and my um, higher bits will be this part. Why do I do that? Because there's a trick. I'm gonna write this in a comment. Instead of doing two calls, output byte, high address, comma, page one and zero x f f zero zero and then also since it's a byte i have to write shift by eight instead of do this we can do oh sorry wait a second um, 
not quite right, almost. I'm actually I'm not I'm going to write to the to this thing here. So instead of doing this, CRTC index Hydra, sorry, my fault. So the usually usual addressing ho still holds. We outport a byte to the index register with the high address register number, and then to the data port we do this. But instead of that, we can actually compute the high address like this. Just copy this here for completeness sake. And do only one outport command, but not outport byte, but we outport a word. But in TopoC you just write outport to CRTC index with the value high address. What this does is actually doing both things in one function call. Because writing a word to a port means that you write the one byte to the first address and the second byte to the same address plus one, which is the case for the VGA actually. So this is possible and we're gonna do this here because it looks a bit neater because we have to do quite a bit of stuff. So we'll use this trick to write to the CRTC index register the high address first. And then we will copy that. Come on. And we will write the low address. However, this will lead still to screen tearing and strange artifacts. So we will wait for the vertical retrace or rather the display enable. So we read from the input status register as usual. And this time we don't use the vertical retrace bit but the display enable bit which uh, is more suitable in this case. So just like this. And then we wait for the vertical retrace to finish or start. Let me think, why not input and we retrace. This should be good. I think I need another parenthesis. Okay, um, one thing still missing, the copy. First, let's try to do this here. Code has no effect, which is true because it's zero. And this is worse. This is actually not what I want. This should have an effect, but it doesn't because I think I'm missing some parentheses, right? Not quite. So I will just replace this to silence the warning. Um, oh, I know why. <laughs> because I forgot to actually set the color. That's what I forgot. Yeah, that's better. So we have all these implemented, but the copy to page is still missing. So let's do that. Um, copy to page takes a far pointer from the source, the page offset, and a height, a maximum height that we should copy. So I need probably some iteration variables because I'm iterating over x and y. Should I probably call them x and y? Could be a good idea. Yeah. Let's call them X and Y so we know better what we are talking about. So first we iterate over the Y coordinates. As long as Y is less than the height that we're supposed to do, we just increment. Same goes for the X coordinate. If X is smaller than screen near what was it VGA with right we increment 
this sounds good so um let's also make it more readable, readable by introducing a special variable for calculating the color we take the source image take the y coordinate times pga width which sounds fine i think plus the x coordinate and that should be our source pixel then we call simply setPix, which we just implemented for this page that we got, x and y coordinate and c. Let's build it all. There's one warning. Suspicious pointer conversion, which is fine. Yeah, I think I should take the address of the first Byte probably. Yeah, this silenced the warning. Understandably, yeah, because it was a pointer to pointer and that got casted to a simple pointer. And by dereferencing both pointers with an excess here, we can actually get a valid pointer. Shall we try to run it? Hopefully, it doesn't crash. Four times we will load this. And the last one, it's very slow. We need to speed up the GIF loader. And it doesn't work. Okay, um, looks looks funny, <laughs> but it's complete garbage. Yeah, so let's uh, let's see what's what's wrong here. Okay, this error was uh, annoyingly simple because the right shift operator actually has very low precedence. So I have to actually put parentheses around this, otherwise the whole page plus something gets right shifted. It has very low precedence, so always make sure to put your parentheses correctly. Yeah, if we run this, you get uh, to wait a couple more seconds as usual, but we will load in the four images and there's a lot of stuff to be improved on in this, as you can see with the speed. And also the pixel plotting is very slow. And you can see me here, uh, the four other pages being loaded in the back buffers and you get a dummy animation looking very stupidly but demonstrating the fact that actually the mode y plus the fast page flipping actually works um yeah i think this is already a good starting point we can definitely improve on what we can do with this stuff um, but the episode is already pretty long and as you can see we have now a basis on which to build and make more interesting stuff. Now we can put this into the VGA library and say, we've dealt with that. Now we can do faster bit splitting operations, scrolling, uh, maybe sprites or whatever is possible in the future. But this will take a couple of episodes, of course, to build up to that. So please bear with me and I hope you learned something here. I hope to see you soon. Uh, hit the share and like buttons please do subscribe if you haven't we're getting so much closer to the 1000 subscribers which unlocks quite a number of nice features in youtube and i really want to see that happen uh, if possible and if you want to support me as usual there are patreon and coffee links down there if you can't it doesn't matter please leave a comment to uh, start a bit of conversation and otherwise i will see you next time hopefully